Next question says Kasim has some small jars, some medium jars, and some large jars. He has a total of 400 jars. Three eight of the 400 jars are empty. For the empty jars, number of small jars is to number of medium jars is 3 is to 4. And the number of medium jars is to number of large jars is 1 is to 2. Work out the percentage of Kasim's jars that are empty small jars. So first, let's find out the empty jars. That's going to be 3 eighths of 400, which is going to give us 150. Now, small jars to medium jars is 3, 4. So small is to medium is 3 is to 4. And medium is to large is 1 is to 2. What we can do is we can combine it as a single ratio with small, medium, and large. But to do that, we need to make medium the same in both the ratios. So what we can do is in the second ratio, we can times it by 4. So now we have 4 is to 2, which is the same as this. So small is to medium is to large becomes 3 is to 4 is to 8. Now, work out the percentage of Carson's jars that are empty small jars. So empty small jars are going to be empty small jars. That is going to be 3 over 15 because we add 3, 4, and 8 times 150, which is the total number of empty jars. That gives us 30 jars. So to find the percentage of empty mm -hmm. small jars, I'm going to do 30 divided by 400, which is the total number of jars, times 100. And that is going to give me 7.5%. That's your answer. Next question says that table gives information about the amount of time that each of 150 people were in a shop. On the grid, draw a histogram for this information. So for histogram, we need the frequency density. And frequency density has the formula of frequency over class width. So we find the first frequency density. That's going to be 20 divided by 10, which is 2. Then for the second frequency density, that's going to be 70 divided by 20 which is 3.5. For the third frequency density, that's 22 divided by 5, which is going to give us 4.4. Fourth frequency density is going to be 30 over 15. That's 2. And the last one is going to be 8 over 10, which is 0 0.8. So on the y-axis, we'll plot the frequency density. On the x-axis, we'll use the time intervals. So 0 to 10, 10 to 30, 30 to 35, 35 to 50. So that's 40, that's 50, and then to 60. Now for the y-axis, we can make a scale of our biggest value is 4.4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. So 0 to 10, it's 2. So that's our bar for that. Then 10 to 30, it's 3.5. Thirty thirty five, it's four point four. Then uh, thirty five to fifty, we have two again, and the last one is zero point eight. Okay.
This is a histogram. And says we cut an estimate for the fraction of these 150 people who were in the shop for between 20 and 40 minutes. So between 20 and 40 minutes, those people are here and here. This is 20, this is 40. So we need basically these people, these people, and these people. These are the people that we need. So what we're going to do is that we're going to find the number of people in these bars. So between 20 and 30, we can see that the frequency density was 3.5. So if we do 3.5 times 10, finding the area of the bars, for 20 and 30, that's going to be 35. Then this was 4.4. So 4.4 times 5 that's going to give us 22 and then this is 2 again so 2 times 5 that is 10 so if we add this up 22 plus 35 plus 10 that gives us 67 So once we have the area of these bars, now we find the area of the entire histogram. So that's going to be for this, it's going to be 2 times 10, 20, plus 20 times 3.5, that's 70. Then 5 times 4.4, .4, that's 22. And then we have 2 times 15. 30 and lastly 0 0.8 times 10 which is 8 so now we add the total area that's going to be 20 plus 70 plus 22 plus 30 plus 8 which is 150 so we will divide 67 by 150 And that is our fraction for the people who were between 20 and 40 minutes. Next question says that A, B, C, and D, A, B are similar isosceles triangles. So let's highlight these now. So A, B is similar to D, A. A, C is similar to db and bc is similar to ab ab equals to ac this equals to this and this equals to this bc is to cd is 4 is 21 find the ratio of ab is to ad so We can see that BC divided by AB because BC and AB are congruent because BC and AB are similar would equal to AC over BD because AC and BD are similar. So using this property of similar triangles because in similar triangles we believe that the shape is either enlarged or like reduced in size using a common scale factor and that common scale factor is changing the lens. So what we're going to do is that if BC is to cd is 4 is to 21 which means bd would be 25 because that's the total of it so if we write the lens for it and assume that bd is x so bc is basically 4 
twenty fifths of x, and C D is twenty one over twenty fifths of x. So I'm going to substitute these into this uh, equation that I've created. So B C is four over twenty five x, and A B which is the same as AC, that's gonna come as it is. And I'm gonna replace AC with AB as well because they're basically the same. And BD is X. So if you cross multiply, we have four over 25 X squared equals to AB squared. Take the square root on both sides. So we left it 2 over 5x equals to ab. So we know what ab is. So ad is already the same as bd. So if we assume bd to be x, ad is also going to be x. So ab is to ad would be 2 fifths of x is to x. The x get cancelled out. We multiply both sides of 5. So 2 is to 5 is your ratio for AB is to AD. For question 3, C is the circle with center 0, 0. L is a straight line. The circle C and L intersect at the points P and Q. The coordinates of P are 5, 10. And the X coordinate of Q is negative 2. L has the positive gradient crosses the Y axis at the point 0, K. Find the value of K. So since the circle intersects the line at point P and Q, that means that if we draw this like this and say this is P and this is Q, we have the center over here. Both OP and OQ are the same because they represent the radius. P equals to the radius because the points are located on the circle not inside the circle outside circle so we can find the distance of op which is going to be 5 square plus 10 square that's square root 125 oq is also square root of 125 so using this value we can find the y coordinate of q square root of 125 equals to negative 2 square plus y square. The square roots get cancelled out. So 125 is 4 plus y square. 125 minus 4 goes to y square. 121 with a square root on both sides. So it's plus minus 11. Now keep in mind that line L has a positive gradient. So this is where this plus minus value will come in hand. So, Q can either be negative 2 and 11 or negative 2 and negative 11. So, we will determine this by finding the gradient of PQ. Why PQ? Because the line L has the point P and Q on it. So, if we find the equation of line PQ, that's basically the same as the equation of line L. So, gradient of PQ using the first set of points and this 11 minus 10 over negative 2 minus 5. That's 1 over negative 7. So this shows that the gradient is negative. So we don't take this. Now if we use the second set, negative 11 minus 10 over negative 2 minus 5. That's negative 21 over negative 7, and that gives us positive 3. So this is correct, and this is wrong. So this is our gradient. I'm going to take 5, 10, and this gradient, y minus 10 equals to 3 times x minus 5. y minus 10 equals to 3x minus 15. y equals to 3x minus 15 plus 10, and y equals to 3x minus 5. This is our equation for the line PQ or line L. 
Now they want us to find the k value where it's the x versus the y coordinate of this point. So we put x equals to 0 and y equals to k. So k equals to 3 times 0 minus 5. k is negative 5. That is your final answer.